Hello to South Shore Baptist Church, and we are home in the USA, and we was going to give you just a little update. There's been some confusion of what happened in India, and so we would just want y'all to know we're good, we're safe, we're physically feeling fine. We have quarantined ourselves in a cabin in Milan, Tennessee, actually we're in Trenton. But the uh, home church is in Milan, Emmanuel Baptist Church. We want to thank them. And so we can walk around out in the yard. So we chose to quarantine ourselves because of the situation for 14 days. But we were quarantined in India for like 17 days. Carla will tell you some of it. But starting March the 14th on a Saturday. We were at our house and we had our Muslim friends over and he was sitting there. They were sitting on our sofa and one of the pastors that we had worked with, Pastor Anandrao, called Rafi on his phone and asked when did we arrive in India. Rafi told him and he said that his sister is one of the nurses that are going to be going door to door asking about everyone's health concerning the coronavirus, that they were going to be going to everyone's homes. Later, um, Rafi was still at our house that day, and two nurses and a man came to our house, and they asked how we were feeling, and they wanted to take pictures of our passports. So that was our first visit, the first day of our issues. <laughs> then, like the next day, March the 15th, uh, I was taking someone home. We had had church at our house and met three men uh, on the street asking for my passport and they want to take pictures. I said, well, they did that yesterday. I said, well, let, let me take these people home and then we'll, I'll be back in about five minutes or so and you, we'll talk. Well, when I got back, there was nowhere to be found. Like a few days later, like March the 18th, um, a doctor came to our house with about six people concerned about our health and she heard we had been to Malaysia. We had been home like 21 days. I said, well, you're welcome to test us, check our temperature. We're, we're okay with that. No, no, we don't want to do that. Anyway, it just seemed a little fishy. They said they was going to everybody's house, but they wasn't. They were just coming to our house. I think that Friday, March the 20th, what happened? Actually, the same two nurses um, and a man came and Tim had gone downstairs yeah. to, when we would get low in our water tank that was on the roof, he'd have to go downstairs, plug in the pump, hit the switch. So he was down there doing that. And they met him asking about his health again. And he said, well, come on upstairs, Carla's upstairs, because they always asked both of us. They said, no, we don't need to talk to her. So that was strange. Tim came up and told me what happened, and he said, see if you can get tickets to go home. We're making these people nervous. We just need to go home until all of this settles down. So it's gonna take a few days. So we left Saturday, uh, got to the airport in Vizac, the city is called Visatna Putnam, and most people call it Vizac. So, in case you're confused, but so we get to Vizac, three hours away from our village. We up in the mountains, Himalayan mountains, and sitting there, we get there early. Uh, United called and said they canceled our flight because they closed the borders to America and India. So we were excited about coming home. We had cried and wept with the Indian people, left them, and got excited seeing everybody then we had to go back home so when we got to our village all the Indian neighbors were waiting on us clapping and excited about us being back home because <laughs> so, they told us to stay in the house and police started coming to our house and checking on us so we actually was in our house I guess 17 days so on Tuesday March 24th a lady from the police department came and she's asking questions again. When did we come back from Malaysia? And what have we been doing? And how is our health? Some of the neighbors 
heard that she was there. Our landlord came and they all started defending us to her and arguing with her. And of course we didn't know a thing that was being said. We got on the phone with the embassy to let them know because things were getting a little heated up in our living room. So finally that all settled down and um, of course the embassy said this elevated our situation because the police got involved. And then at 6 p.m. that night, two policemen came from the next village police department wanting our address, our U.S. address, and wanted to know where we had been, what villages had we been to. Of course, we'd been in our home since the 18th. We hadn't been anywhere. But our landlord mostly talked to him, so we didn't know a lot that was being said. Then at 8.30 that night is when the policeman came wanting us to sign a piece of paper that we didn't want to sign. The paper stated that we were responsible for the spread of the disease. And I said, do you read English? No, sir. So he got his inspector on the phone that spoke English. And I was trying to explain to him this written wrong. I, I'm not responsible. I'm not going to sign the paper. They said they would come and arrest us the next day if I didn't sign. My landlord talked to him, and he knew the inspector and talked to the inspector. So it, he kind of calmed the people down. Carlos was on the phone to the embassy when I was talking to the police, and he said, don't sign it, don't receive the paper. And so we did, and the next day they came with another piece of paper stating if we left our house and someone was uh, received the virus, uh, that we would be responsible. So Carl and I signed that paper knowing we was gonna stay at our house. Our neighbors were bringing us food. There are some getting close to being saved. They just need more understanding. Uh, but all our neighbors were very kind to us. And at this point, India went on lockdown, a nationwide lockdown. And so there were limited shops open and no public transportation. Nobody was supposed to be out and about. People were supposed to stay in their homes. The embassy started the paperwork for the evacuation. And they gave us a contact for their security team member that if we had any more uh, trouble, such as threats of arrest and all that anymore, that uh, we were to call him first. And he had talked to law enforcement and settled everything down. Wednesday, we signed the new paper. So on Thursday, two policemen came, asked about our health, and um, took a selfie with us. That was their routine. Then on Saturday, uh, two policemen came. They were very nice, asked the same questions, take the selfie, leave. But it wasn't every day. So then on Sunday, March 29th, the inspector of the police department came, wanted us to download an app on our phones. And we're not sure what the app was about, but it was an Android app. And with us having iPhones, we couldn't download it. He said, okay, and he left. So that was the last of the police visits. And we stayed in our home every day, like we were supposed to. So then we started our trip home on Sunday, April 5th. That was interesting. So trying to go through several different drivers, trying to get them to drive us to Hyderabad, which was like 14 hours away. No one wanted to drive us. Through the embassy and a friend of theirs in Vizak, um, there are some missionaries. Uh, they're helping an orphanage. So we got with them. They had a driver, so our landlord drove us to Vizag. The embassy sent us a paper for safe passage, naming us and our vehicle tag number. Uh, our landlord, Srinu Lakshman, and you know his phone number. So we left Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and went through thirteen roadblocks. One of the roadblocks got the Vizac just did not want to let us pass. We was entering the city. 
and we got the security man involved on the phone and he finally told them to call their superiors, which they did, and a little while later they let us go. Uh, they was nice to us, didn't, was not mean to us, but we was there for about 30 minutes. Finally got to the new friend's house. They had an apartment on the roof of their apartment building they rented. So we stayed there that night, Sunday night. Um, and then we was leaving Monday morning to go to Hyderabad. So we took our trip to Hyderabad and was stopped another six times through roadblocks. And the last roadblock entering the city of Hyderabad, same thing, they didn't want to let us enter the city. So we was there for about 30 minutes. Finally, they let us go, got to the hotel the embassy had booked for us. Of course, just so you know, we were paying for everything. <laughs> Our first trip was gonna cost us $2,800. Uh, of course, that was canceled. This trip cost us $4,280, everything. The plane tickets, the government's gonna send us a bill in the mail. Then once we get the bill, we have 30 days to pay it. So we hadn't paid that yet. But the driver, all the extra things we had to do, the motel, the food, everything was just extra. But uh, we had the money in the bank. It's uh, The Lord has already provided, and there's some churches sending extra money. We thank them for that. Stayed in the motel, got up the next day, went through all the paperwork, and I think our temperature was checked like eight times when we got to the motel until we left. Got on the bus, and on the bus, we went to uh, Hyderabad Airport. And it was hot. They didn't have the air going because everything shut down in India, so the airport had been empty. And we had to wait a few hours. So there were, I don't know, 100 or so of us there. So we flew to Mumbai and went through the same process we did in Hyderabad and met hundreds of more people there coming from different places. There were 800 to 1,000 people being evacuated. Another hot airport, another long wait. And we got on the plane, packed in like sardines with our little masks on. Social distancing. No social distancing going on. And we all survived. Well, we survived. We all know how everybody else did. <laughs> and we were supposed to land in Atlanta 17 hours later. But over Canada, the pilot came on and announced that we were having engine problems and we were going to need to land at the nearest airport, airport, which was Detroit. So we did, and then everybody um, had to stay on the plane because it was between 4.30 and 5 a.m. in the morning, and us coming from another country, we had to go through customs, immigration, and all that. So those officers were not there at the airport yet. So we had to sit on the plane for an hour or two, waiting for them to get there. So at 8.30, we took off on another flight to Atlanta and landed around 10.30 and rented a car and drove here to Trenton, to the cabin. Our kids had come and stocked the cabin with food. We got too much food that we haven't eaten in a long time. We're usually eating vegetables in India. That's available most any time. So that's usually what we eat, rice and vegetables. Uh, very seldom eat meat unless someone cooks for us. And, but it's too spicy for Carla. So, so my, our kids overdid it, <laughs> but uh, we thank them. Anyway, so we're at the cabin, quarantine ourselves, and it's not fun. But we can walk outside uh, in India, we were stuck. So all to all those people who are stuck in their house, um, praying for you more uh, than I have been because mentally it's not good to stay inside your house. God didn't make us to stay uh, inside of our house. He created social people, some more than others, anyway. But 
His mercy endureth forever. I can say that. But God bless y'all. Thank you for your prayers, and hopefully we'll see you soon.